In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, different types of cells. There are two main classes of cells. Uh, one of them is combined bacteria and archaea. These are traditionally called uh, prokaryotes. Um, I'll tell you why I don't like that term in a minute. Uh, and then there's eukaryotic cells that tend to have a lot more complexity and structure. And so the name eukaryote means um, has a karyote, uh, means nut, and it's probably because eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. Uh, prokaryote means before nut, but not all bacteria and archaea uh, evolved prior to uh, eukaryotes. Um, they're evolving today, just like uh, eukaryotes are. And so uh, we'll talk later about how bacteria, archaea, and uh, eukaryota are evolutionarily related to each other. But today I'm going to talk about the uh, composition of the cells. Um, so in both cases, uh, there is the boundary with a cell wall uh, plus a membrane. And these features keep the cell intact, keep all the things that the cells need on the inside uh, contained within the cell and not letting, say, the DNA um, leak out. So the bacteria have their DNA in a single circular chromosome, and this is true of archaea as, as well. So they have a a single circular chromosome. So this, in bacteria and archaea, this chromosome is just inside uh, the main part of the cell, uh, which is the material that's supporting it in here is uh, called the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is full of uh, organic molecules and enzymes and uh, fibers that give the cell structure. Uh, there are plasmids. There, are the, which are little um, membrane-bound molecules that uh, can have DNA inside them. There are other vacuoles, uh, various things that can hold uh, cell, things the cell needs or things the cell wants to get rid of and compartmentalized. Bacteria and archaea can have various things on the outside. So, for example, the gel or um, pillus. These, the pillus are just little uh, molecules that stick outside the cell uh, that, that help it uh, move by, say, attaching to other things and contracting, whereas the flagellum uh, spins around and helps uh, propel uh, the cell. So in general, uh, the, the parts of the cell, oh, I should also say that these little red dots, which are the, the ribosomes here, they're what take uh, the genetic material and actually make, make those enzymes. Um, and they're scattered throughout the cell, um, usually close to the, the DNA. So archaea and bacteria just have all of these components more or less dispersed in the cell. Um, there'll be variations in the concentration, and they're organized uh, somewhat by these uh, protein filaments but it's basically not really subdivided. In contrast, eukaryotes have a lot of different subdivisions. And this, this light tan color here represents uh, membranes that surround uh, different organelles. And organelles are basically uh, sites um, with specific functions.
So much like the cells have a cell wall and a plasma membrane that holds it in, each organelle has uh, its own membrane that helps concentrate the activities of that organelle into a single uh, location. Um, so, so this particular one with the genetic material uh, in it is the nucleus, of course. And surrounding it um, is the endoplasmic reticulum, the rough one and the smooth one. And that endoplasmic reticulum holds the ribosomes. The chromosomes are, of course, inside the nucleus, and they are strands. Um, of uh, DNA that are that are packaged into into coils, um, but they aren't in the circular form that we have in uh, the bacteria and archaea. The endoplasmic reticulum holds the ribosomes close to the nucleus because uh, the ribosomes are what take the genetic material when genes are expressed, the messenger RNA, and convert it into enzymes. Having those really close to the genetic material makes it more efficient for those messenger RNA molecules to actually get to the ribosomes. There are some ribosomes scattered um, throughout the cells as well. Okay. Um, almost all eukaryotic cells also have mitochondria. These mitochondria are the places where the cells react the organic matter and the oxygen to produce energy. So in bacteria and archaeal cells, a lot of that reaction, those reactions actually occur in the, in the plasma membrane, but in eukaryotic cells, they're concentrated within these mitochondria, which have a, a membrane around them, and then membranes inside where the, the enzymes that extract the energy are actually uh, embedded. And then eukaryotes often also have like Golgi apparatus, which helps shape proteins. And they have a lot of these protein fibers that structure the cells. So. These strands and filaments hold the nucleus in place, the mitochondria in place, and, the, and help shape the cell uh, structure. Uh, in eukaryotes, they also have uh, little molecular motors that um, can track along some of these uh, filaments. And these uh, motors help deliver different um, enzymes, different compounds to, to different places in the cell um, uh, where they're, they're actually needed. So there are lots of other things that, that can be in eukaryotic cells, but one of the main differences between the eukaryotes and the archaea is really this, this, um, this localization of function into specific areas of the cell. So here, in this case, the function uh, the f are compartmentalized. So one of the interesting things about this compartmentalization is it can be seen in the mitochondria. So there's a little bit of DNA that's in the mitochondria that is outside the nucleus. Most of that, the DNA in eukaryotic cells is in the nucleus, but the mitochondria have a little bit of their own. And when we look at this DNA and the sequences, it actually is the DNA that's very closely related to bacteria and a very specific uh, type of bacteria. And the that DNA plus the actual structure of the mitochondria has given rise to this idea 
that the, the mitochondria actually evolved from bacteria. Originally, the mitochondria were free-living bacterial cells that started living within a host eukaryotic cell um, some billions of years ago, and then eventually became completely merged with, that, with the eukaryotic host cells, except for this little bit of DNA. And that process is called endosymbiosis. All right, so endo means inside, and, and symbiosis is one of those uh, reactions that we talked about that's mutually beneficial. So it's a mutualistically beneficial um, uh, relationship where the, the bacteria uh, produces energy for the host cell, and the host cell provides a consistent environment for the bacteria um, through that, that process of homeostasis. And so this is the case where eukaryotic cells, all of them that have mitochondria, uh, actually are the merging, represent the, the merger of two different ancestral life forms, one from bacteria and one from the beginning of the eukaryotic uh, cell line. Thanks for watching.